Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Lucas and today I'm going to show you all how to draw a colorful mandala on toned paper. I have some fun supplies here to use for this mandala and I'll be unpacking each one as the mandala progresses. To get started, I'll use the Sumo Grip Mechanical Pencil to sketch out our mandala first. I'll also use the Sumo Grip Retractable Eraser to fix any mistakes. The first step is to find the center of the page. I eyeball this part and mark it on the paper with my pencil. Afterwards, I draw a circle around it, making sure to keep my hand steady so that we have a nice circle. Since we will outline our markings later on, we want our lines to be as neat as possible. Our first design will be small round tip petals. On the circle just drawn, create your first small round tip petal. Using this as a guideline, continue drawing these petals around the circle until your first row is complete. The next step, we are going to draw another circle around our mandala, closing in our design so far. By drawing circles, you give yourself a guideline to help you draw even rows. On top of this line, we will then draw pointy tip petals. Draw your first petal and use it as a guideline to continue the design around the entire mandala. You can also mark your petal spots to help you draw an even amount of petals if it helps. It's common to make mistakes, so try to fix these as early on as possible before you outline your mandala. In the dips of the petal we just drew, I will then draw round petals. Using your first round petal as a guide, continue drawing these petals in each dip until the row is completed. When you're finished, draw another round petal on top. Continue this design around the mandal until completed. Once this row is completed in the dips, draw arches that connect each petal. Continue this design until the row is completed. Next, we will then draw a cluster of petals on top of these arches. Just as we had done before with our first row in the beginning, except you will now draw them on a curved line. When one arch is completed, continue the design until all the arches are filled in. Next, I will then draw another circle around our mandala. Use dots around the mandala to help you draw them easier. Once one circle is finished, I will then draw another circle on top of it, creating a thin border. As our mandala gets bigger, so will our petals. With the thin border completed, I would then draw bigger pointy tip petals. Use your first petal as a guide to complete the row around the mandala. In the dips of each petal, draw an upside down teardrop. Fill in the entire row with these designs. Next, draw round petals on top of these teardrops, making sure that the heights are all the same so that your mandala looks uniformed. On the tips of the pointy petals, we will draw a curved triangle next. This triangle will be on top of our pointy tip petals with curved sides. When your first curved triangle is finished, complete the entire row with this design. On top of our round petal, we will then draw bigger pointy tip petals. These petals will connect to the curved triangles that we just drew. When our first petal is finished, complete the entire row with this design. In the dips, we will then draw small arches that connect our pointy tip petals. When one arch is done, draw another arch on top of it, creating a thin border. Complete the entire row with this design. On top of this arch, we will then draw a cluster of petals, just as we had done before. Continue this design until your row is completed. Once our cluster petals are completed, I will then create arches over each space. The arches will be slightly above the designs, but will not touch them. Continue drawing arches around the entire mandala until completed. In each dip, draw small round triangles. These designs are just like triangles except their tips are round instead of pointy. Draw this design in each dip. When you're finished, on each side of the triangle, draw a swirl that touches the arches below. When one side is drawn, complete the other side. Then draw a teardrop in the tip of the triangle. Continue this design around the entire mandala until completed. It's now time to outline. 
I personally like to use a variety of sizes when it comes to outlining my mandala and for this one, I use number 5 and number 8. Number 5 will be used to outline, while number 8 will be used to make our lines thicker to stand out. Try to play around with different sized pens and markers to make your mandala come to life. Once the entire mandala is outlined, I then take my eraser and erase all the pencil markings before we use our gel pens. Before I use my gel pens though, I first want to add more designs to my petals. In the first row above our first border where our pointy tip petals are, I add teardrops inside to the tips. I then add a border inside that connects to our teardrops. When this is finished, I add a small round petal inside. I then complete the entire row with this design until it's finished. From there, I select a few rows that I want to outline with my number 8 pen to make certain designs and rows stand out more. I will now move on to our gel pens and I will use the Moonlight 10 pack for this mandala to create a rainbow themed mandala. Keeping the pens in their exact order, I start with yellow first and work my way back down to blue. This process is very intuitive, but if I have my colors in order, it helps me create a unique mandala. With each color that I use, I space out the designs I want to add color to, making sure that the amount of designs between each color is even. For example, if there are three designs before our yellow starts, I will try to continue spacing my yellow out every three designs. As the mandala gets taken up with more color, the easier it becomes to fill in more colors as I simply repeat the order of colors that I am using until the mandala is completed. A tip of mine would be to be mindful of where you keep your hands as you draw. These gel pens have such great fluid that they need more time to dry and if you aren't careful you can smear your drawings. Instead, try to draw away from yourself first so that by the time you come back around, the area before you will have had time to dry. Another tip is if your gel pens go over your outline, simply wait for your gel pen to dry before going back over with your pen. These pens are honestly great for covering up gel pen areas and even help your mandala look much neater. As I continue with my gel pens throughout the whole mandala, I will often go back over a certain area with my pen to fix the areas. To get the best out of your jelly roll pens though, I personally find that holding the pens at an angle helps the ink come out much better rather than keeping the pen directly up. You can also layer your colors very easily as well if you want a gradient effect, just as long as you wipe the tips of your pens off before their next use. These gel pens have rich colors that work on a variety of colored paper, so be sure to experiment with yours so you can see what you enjoy the most. I personally love drawing on toned and black paper as it really brings out the colors of these gel pens as they don't lose their vibrant colors as they dry either, making your artwork stand out much more. When it comes to mapping out the colors of your mandala, I love working with my highlight colors first. Since I want my mandalas to stand out as much as possible, I like to work my colors around my highlight colors to achieve the best results. For example, if my highlight color was yellow, I work my colors around this color so that my mandala designs stand out. Once my layer of colors are done, I will then move on to our next highlight color, which is white. Since I used size 10 gel pens, I will pick the same size white gel pen to create even lines. White gel pens are perfect for making certain parts of your mandala stand out, which is why I will use them in only certain rows. If you happen to have spaces that lack designs, take advantage of this and use your white gel pens to bring those spaces to life. I often like to either outline my designs with my gel pens, add white dots to certain areas, or draw another design completely to create a truly unique mandala.
From here, I will continue adding my highlight designs to certain rows. When finished, I will use my pens to fix areas where the gel pens went over. I use both my number 5 and my number 8 pen to fix the lines and add contrast against the colors that we now have. When you play with the colors, you can truly create some unique and wonderful mandalas that will brighten any room you put them in. This completes this tutorial on how to draw a colorful mandala. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and if you did, please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. My name is Sarah Lucas, and I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!